Hello, I'm Joe Galvin, a cardiologist in the Matter and Connolly Hospitals in Dublin. My subspecialty area of interest is cardiac electrophysiology, or EP, the study of arrhythmias. In this video, I'm going to be discussing some questions, common questions from GPs. I think the first thing to do is to assess for any immediate risk to the patient. Is the patient themselves symptomatic? Syncope in the setting of a strong family history of sudden cardiac death or SADS is a, is a major concern. So if a patient comes to you with a syncopal episode and a family member has dropped dead at a young age, that patient should probably be evaluated as an inpatient and be referred in through the emergency room. In the absence of recent syncope, the patient should be referred on to a family heart screening clinic. We operate such a clinic through the Matters Heart House. The CRY clinic in Tala is the only other clinic in Ireland that's dedicated to the assessment of uh, families such as this. The crucial bits of information that the family heart screening clinic will need are the autopsy report on the person who died and any details that you may have about any other relevant family history, in particular any other sudden cardiac deaths in that family. An ECG at the time of your referral would be helpful but ECG and other cardiac investigations will be done through our family heart screening clinic in the Matter Heart House. We usually begin with first degree relatives. So if a teenager dies of SADS, we will bring in their siblings and their parents. And guided by the autopsy results, whether it showed cardiomyopathy or whether it was a true SADS death with no abnormality or whether there was coronary disease, we will then go and assess those family members first. If the parents are found to have the condition it makes it more likely that siblings will be involved. Also important then will be to go and examine the siblings of the parents and their offspring. So after screening first degree relatives we move on to second degree and if they are positive on to third degree relatives. Sometimes we'll get a call from a second degree or thir third degree relative asking for screening. Um, we will try to oblige, but our priority is to do this in a cascade manner, starting with first degree and then moving on. Hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is a genetic condition. It's usually caused by gene mutations in the genes responsible for the sarcomeric proteins. These families should be assessed through a family heart screening clinic. Traditional referral patterns in Ireland for hypertrophic cardiomyopathy have been through general cardiology clinics. I think this is also very useful, but it's important that family screening be performed and that genetic testing be done to try to identify the gene mutation responsible for the hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. This will be done through a family heart screening clinic and not through a general cardiology clinic. So whether you refer to a cardiologist first or to a family heart screening clinic first where the patient will also be seen by a cardiologist is not terribly important but I think it's important that the patient is seen through a family screening clinic and that genetic testing be done. If hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is diagnosed in a family, we screen, just like with any other inherited cardiac disease, first degree relatives, and if they are found to have evidence of the condition, we move on to second degree relatives. Because of variable penetrance, meaning that some family members 
may have the gene, they may carry the gene but not have the condition, we would have a low threshold with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy to move on and test second degree relatives. One situation where this doesn't occur is if we have identified the gene culprit and first degree relatives, for example parents, don't carry the gene. This can happen in cases of so-called spontaneous mutations and in this case further family screening is not indicated. When there's been a sudden cardiac death uh, in somebody less, uh, aged less than 40 years, those families should be referred on to the family heart screening clinic. Critical is the post-mortem report. The post-mortem report will tell us whether there was evidence of coronary disease, cardiomyopathy or ion channelopathy. If the autopsy showed coronary disease, then a different assessment is needed for the family. Coronary disease is multifactorial with a large component of lifestyle. So for example, if, if, a, if a man dies at 38 years of age and was a heavy smoker, this would have far less implications for family members than somebody who died in their teenage years of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, a condition which is purely genetic. So the patterns we're looking for, the highest risk patterns, are families where there have been multiple sudden cardiac deaths, not due to coronary disease, under 40 years of age. Deaths due to coronary disease under 40 years of age, however, should trigger some sort of family assessment, specifically looking for modifiable risk factors such as hyperlipidemia and hypertension. We will see families where there's been a sudden death less than 40 due to coronary disease through our family heart screening clinic to test for these factors. Familial hyperlipidemia is a genetic condition. We treat these patients like we treat anybody else with hyperlipidemia in that we do a fasting lipid profile. If their cholesterol level is elevated and their risk factor profile mandates therapy, we go ahead and start a statin. We do, however, test other family members and uh, uh, treat them accordingly. I think familial hyperlipidemia generally can be treated through uh, primary care. And I don't think these patients necessarily need to be treated to treated through the family heart screening clinic. Genetic testing is generally not indicated and rather treatment is decided based purely on their lipid profile.